Hi everyone, my name is Jackson Alexander, and today I'm going to be doing a look back at Gen 1 and 2 of Pokemon. We all know the classic RPG where you catch monsters and force them to battle to the death. I'm of course talking about the Amazing Pokemon series. Yes, and what many of you may not know is how well the second generation Pokemon series gels so well with the first, something that the future Pokemon games were never really able to reproduce. Let's talk about the story. So first generation Red and Blue, you're a kid from Pallet Town who has come of age to set off on this journey to be a Pokemon Master. Now, even though you have the option to put in your own name, like in Legend of Zelda or Final Fantasy, this character does have an established name, and that's Red. Now as Red starts on his journey, he acquires the starter Pokemon from Professor Oak, and so does his childhood rival, Blue. You set off collecting badges that are needed to fight against the toughest trainers there are, the Elite Four. However, as you go through the game, the main antagonizing force is Team Rocket, as they constantly show up and it's your job to ruin their plans. Now several things are laid out right at the beginning, and before we continue, it has to be pointed out that Pokemon does something better than a lot of games I've played don't. And that's giving you an overarching goal to strive as you continue through the story. The first town you enter, Viridian City, it introduces the two greatest things in the story. First is the Elite Four, and also the mysterious 8th Gym. These are left dangling over your head throughout the journey and pay off extremely well at the end. It turns out that Giovanni, Team Rocket's head guy, is actually the 8th gym leader. This sets up massive tension as this guy you've been fighting throughout the whole game stands in your way between you and the Elite Four. Once you beat him, you set on the hard challenge to the Indigo Plateau, fighting one Elite Four member after another. Finally, when you think it's all done, you beat the last trainer, and who else shows up at the end claiming to be champion but Blue himself? Yep, and that makes total sense. The guy who you've been growing up with as a Pokemon trainer is your toughest challenge. Yet, once you win, you're crowned Pokemon Master. Now this is where Generation 2 comes in, and it takes everything from Generation 1 and ramps it up. It's a similar setup as you're a Pokemon trainer, Gold, who sets off on his quest to be Pokemon Master. Yet, who else shows up but the remnants of the disabandoned Team Rocket, who try and get the old band back together. This time, your rival is also some common thief. He isn't some jack like blue. No, this guy is a straight up And you know the rest of the story. Get eight badges, go to Victory Road, and fight the Elite Four once again. Yet something's different this time. You're not just restricted to going to the Johto region, you can actually play in the Kanto region and become like Red, fighting all those gym leaders. This is mind blowing. If you come from the first game, everything is the same, and it's like you're walking the same path. Now instead of looking up and trying to beat the Elite Four Giovanni, this time you're working to prove your skills against these old pros. Now you're being able to measure and see if you have the same potential Red did. Again, you have to defeat Team Rocket and collect all 8 badges, which is worth mentioning that the 8th gym leader is actually blue. But then, you've finished. You've beat all 16 gyms, you've already beaten the Elite Four, so what's next? Well, there's only one other person that's accomplished what you have. That's right, Red. Red is sitting high atop Mount Moon and is awaiting you to come challenge him. Now this is why the connection between Generation 1 and Generation 2 is so unmatched. You have to fight against the old champion. You have to prove that you deserve to be called a Pokemon Master. You've gone through what twice Red has and everything is at stake, because no matter what, if you can't beat the best, then you aren't the best. That's what Pokemon's all about. It's all about the roadblocks set up in your way and your ability to adapt and do whatever it takes to be the master. I'm Jackson, and that's why Generation 1 and 2 of Pokemon is so dear to my heart and the best out of the series. Now back to the show.